Hi everyone, welcome to day 21 of Before the Fork, the 28 day experience. I'm Robin Shea and this is day 21 evening message. So not only is it day 21, but it is day one of phase three. So I hope you guys took time to listen to this morning's message and it was all about uh, redefining your polarity and, and reminding yourself of, of the, the worst of the worst and the best of the best so that you can find your success somewhere in the middle of that. Uh, and I hope that throughout your day, you identify the polarities in your life that will help you strengthen where it is that you want to go and not allowing either one of those poles to become numbed out. So that was the morning message. And tonight I want to share a story with you about finding the blessing in the messes of life. Now it's relative because I know that all of us go through our days, go through our weeks, our months, our years, and sometimes we get hit with things. And because we're so accustomed to red, yellow, and total reactive zone thinking, it never occurs to us to really seek out the blessing in the situation. And sometimes it's an extremely challenging thing to do to find the blessing in what looks like and feels like an absolute and utter personal disaster. But I want to share with you a story about me sniffing out a blessing in an otherwise very ugly part of my life. So this was several years ago. And as many of you may or, or may not know, I'll share with you now, for all of 2015 into 16, I was working really closely with Paula Dean. Paula and I, I was the healthy side of her brand. I wrote a blog for her each week. It was a, a wonderful blog based off of her, one of her cookbooks. And it was her cleaned up cookbook, her lighter cookbook. So I made menus called Paula's Perfect Plate. And, and I love, love, love working with Paula. She's a fantastic lady. Well, in about July of that year, this has been two years ago. So it was 2016. July of that year, Paula was on Evine, which is a one of the consumer, straight to consumer purchase channels like a QVC or or HSN, Evine is one of those channels. And Paula had a wonderful line of products on Evine and she was expanding her show, moving it to Savannah. And Paula wanted me to come in and host the show, be her on air talent and selling her products right alongside her in Savannah. And I thought, although it was completely out of the wheelhouse of what I do, it was a wonderful opportunity uh, to and, and the pay was fantastic. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this. This really sounds like a, a great challenge. And as many of you know who have read the book, I don't consider myself a salesperson. So this was really outside of my, my wheelhouse of, of expertise in every sense of the, of the word. But I was honored that Paula wanted me there and wanted me to be part of her Evine experience. So um, I trained, I studied, I researched, I watched. I poured myself into it. Everything that I do um, with 8020 Lifestyle, my own television program, all of it stopped because this was all consuming. So I went all in. Uh, it, it required that I drive to Savannah every week, each week, uh, left on Sundays, got home Wednesday nights. So I was home Thursday, Friday, Saturday, left again Sunday. This was each week for months at a time. Well, one night, one show, um, we, it was a fantastic show. We did so good. The sales were off the hook and we were so proud of the execution of that night. Paula and I were getting our on air rhythm together and, um, the next went to went to sleep in, at, at Paula's, woke up the next morning, got in my truck, started driving back to Bowling Green. And about an hour or two outside of Savannah, heading back to Bowling Green, I get a phone call from Evine. Now, you have to understand, it was the best show we've ever had. 
and our numbers were fantastic. And I get a call from Corporate Evine, and who was actually my employer, and they said, um, we are going to have to replace you with an, an in-house talent. So basically that was your last show. And so I got, I got fired. And it was like a, just a kick in the stomach. I was so embarrassed. Bowling Green is a relatively small town. Uh, so I was embarrassed. I, was, I didn't know how to tell my husband. I knew my children would be disappointed. So as you can imagine, it was just a lot of internal uh, shame and, and, oh, how did I blow it? What did I do? How could I do better? I was really beating myself up. Pulled over to the side of the road started crying, just the whole disappointment thing that, that you would imagine. And as I'm sitting on the side of the road on the highway, I got one of those very gentle nudges from God. And he just tap, tap, tapped me on my shoulder. And he said, hey girl, I provided the income because I didn't have time to spend the money I was making. And I was making very good money, but I was working so much and traveling so much. I didn't have time to spend it. So it was just building up in an account over here. Hey girl, I provided you the money and now I cleared your schedule. Get your butt back to Bowling Green, hire the editor that you've been talking with and write the stupid book. And voila, eight months later, Before the Fork was written and published. And it was funny because I was sitting on the side of the road and tears, crying, and I literally started laughing when the clarity of God's plan came into focus and I could feel his guidance over my life and saying, okay, this is what I did for you. You were never intended to do that. You just needed the money. Now you got the money. I couldn't afford the um, the editor on my own. I couldn't dip into my household income because it was a substantial amount of money to pay someone to help me through this process. Uh, so the income was right there and it was, I, I started laughing. I started praying. I started praising God for his deliverance in that moment. And I immediately picked up the phone, called the editor and I said, you're hired. We start on Monday. And I never looked back and I never shed another tear and I never felt those pains of embarrassment or disappointment or frustration or shame. God washed all of those away because it was clear to me in an instant that he had a much greater plan for my life than, uh, than I could have ever seen. Now, the reason I'm telling you this story is because the work that I have done on myself with the red, yellow, total reactive and green zone ladder work, the emotional work is what allowed me to align with the blessing of that day. If I was someone that still uh, allowed myself to ruminate in low vibration emotions of red and yellow zone thinking, I don't know that I ever would have found the blessing in that day. It would have been drowned out because of the disconnection between my source and, and myself. Uh, God was still there calling me. He wanted me to see the blessing. He wanted me to see all the goodness that he poured into me through that, that experience. Um, but I'm sorry, I don't know what that noise was. Uh, but I wouldn't have been able to tune in to the blessing because my disconnection would have been so strong. But because of the work in Before the Fork, now realize that before it was this book, it was working in my head and on paper, tons of, of notes and outlines and uh, a student manual and everything that I had been working. So I was very familiar what the book was actually going to look like. But getting it here to this, this form right here was more work than I really ever imagined. Uh, so I knew red and yellow and total reactive zone, the happiness ladder, all of that was already well-defined in my mind. I'd already been practicing the elements of that for many, many years. 
But had I not been in tune with the search for the blessing, I would have never felt God's nudge. Our alignment, our connection would not have been strong enough. I would have sat on the side of the road. I would have felt shameful. I would have called my husband in disgrace. I would have just imagine compounding the shame that can go with being let go from a national television program. Uh, and God only let me visit that for, I don't know, a minute, minute and a half, time enough for me to get over to the side of the road, uh, park my car, and um, get, cry, get a good cry out, so a good 30, 45 second cry, and then God did the gentle tap, 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 hey you, money's there, time is now there, call the gal, get going, stop wallowing in this self-pity, this is not serving you. So that's my message tonight is that, you know, I've introduced this red, yellow and total reactive zone thinking as um, for use in your health and fitness transformation. But I hope that you're seeing how it actually penetrates every area of your life. Every area of your life will benefit when you focus on training your mind to operate in the green zone where your connection to Christ is strongest. It will not save you from those moments of despair. That is not what its intention is. But it, what it will do is when you do get kicked in the stomach, rather than thinking about the pain, wanting revenge on this guy, and, and all that, it, that can be welled up in those low, low, low moments of life, it allows you to say, you know what? There's a blessing here. Let's find the blessing. Let's find the blessing. And when that becomes your focus, when searching for the blessing becomes your focus, those low grade, low vibration emotions lose their power over you. They lose their power. They're effortless. Hi, Michael Ann. So that's the message tonight. We've all experienced our fair share of disappointment, tragedy, um, embarrassment, um, soul searching, you know, everything that goes with, with, in my case, what felt devastating. Not only am I a very relatively shy person, but to feel like public failure face was more than my psyche could, could handle until God turned it around for me. And God said, this isn't about them. This isn't about the people watching. It has nothing to do. This is how I provided for you. So see my blessing, accept my blessing, and get on with your bad self and write the book. And that's what I did. So he continues to just amaze me um, daily. And this one little switch in... Um, relating to the happiness ladder can mean everything in your life. It can take you from the lowest point to the highest point, just as God did on the side of the road coming home from Savannah uh, that day in March of 2000. Oh, thank you, Michael Ann. I'm so glad I did too. I think it was March 2017. It took me from uh, depths of despair to the most joyous laughter, knowing that God and I were on the same side and that he was constantly and always providing and looking out for my best interest. So I love you all. If you missed any of that, please go back and listen to it. I think it's a, a really poignant message uh, for right now, especially to help you reframe things in your life that may seem like a struggle, uh, an insurmountable struggle. Uh, just know that there is a blessing in there and your only job is to line up with it so that you can find the blessing, feel the blessing, live the blessing, and allow yourself to be blessed by the blessing. Okay, y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you for letting me bend your ear. I'll be praying for your success. Uh, welcome to phase three. We have three more days of um, identifying the tools that work. So remember, that's what we're here for during this phase. If there's any question as to what you're supposed to be doing right now, go back and listen to this morning's message. It outlines 
exactly what phase three is intended to do. Okay, y'all have a super great night. Uh, sleep well, and I will talk to you in the morning. Bye now.